quality first line manager. He has experience in research and development and quality management. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Armin from Levon Club in Exxon Zilla, and I'm here to present the effect of the on electrical distribution and high voltage FFP installation. So, the objective of this presentation is to accurately identify and quantify the exact level of the localized enhanced electric stresses caused by these styling ingredients. Then, we can proceed to further analyze their effect on insulation performance, like partial discharge, water cleaning, and so on. But without this knowledge, we can only make speculations about the situation. Here's the introduction, here's the outline. First, we have the introduction, then, we will talk about the given of the study, then, stresses in healthy XLPE, stresses in contaminated XLPE. After that, we will analyze the results before drawing the final conclusion. For the introduction, we have the electric field distribution in healthy XLPE depends first on the voltage level and on the dimensions of insulation, so the diameter under insulation and the diameter above insulation. We get maximum stress on the inner semicolon insulation interface and we get minimum stress on the outer semicolon insulation interface. Now in the presence of impurity, we will have localized enhanced stresses. These stresses will depend on the material of impurity, so its permittivity, also on the shape of impurity. So impurities having sharp edges tend to have higher stresses. Also it will depend on the size of impurity. So really having large sizes tend to have higher stresses. In literature review, they have only simulated using FEM the effect of a circular shaped void only, which is not our case. Now, to be able to simulate real life situations, first, we have to take a microscopic photo of the impurity. Second, we have to perform image processing to, de to determine the boundaries. And third, we will calculate the uh, stresses using the FEM. Okay, on the study, our cable is 1 by 1200 millimeter squared copper conductor, 132 kilovolt. Diameter of the conductor shield is 47 millimeter. XLP thickness is 21.6 millimeter. And the material of impurity is calcium carbonate, which is non conductor. For stresses and LP XLPE, here we have two computation methods. First one is the mathematical approach, and second one is the FEM approach using GMesh and GetDP free softwares. We will start with the mathematical approach. We're going to use this famous formula Ex equal D over X log R over R, where V is the phase to ground voltage, X is the distance from the center of the conductor to the point, to the desired point. Big R is the radius above the insulation, small r is the radius under insulation. We get maximum stress when X equal to small r, so Emax equal 4961 volt per millimeter. And we get the minimum stress when X equal to big R on the outer semicon where even equal 2,585 volt per millimeter. We will move to the, F, to the FEM approach using GMesh and get the P. Here we're going to solve the Laplace's equation, gradient square of P equal to zero. After solving it, we get a maximum stress of 4,952 volt per millimeter and a minimum stress of 2,591 volt per millimeter, which is almost the same as the mathematical approach. This figure here shows the result Stress, stress ranges from 2.5 kilovolt per millimeter up to 4.9 kilovolt per millimeter. And to better see or to better understand this result, we have to put it in MATLAB and 3D. So this is MATLAB presentation of the results. This is the radius of the conductor and this is the intensity of the electric field. We can see the maximum stress on the inner semicolon of 4.9 kilovolt per, per millimeter and then stress decays to reach its minimum at the outer semicolon of 2.5 kilovolt per millimeter. Now for the stresses in, in contaminated XLPE, we are going to use this methodology in order to know these stresses. First, we have to identify the nature of contamination. Second, we have to take a microscopic photo of this contamination. And third, uh, we have to perform the image processing to determine the boundaries. After that, we have to create a communication algorithm between image processing tool and the FEM tool. And finally, we will, we will perform these computations using the FEM. So first, nature of contamination. This black spot here is the contamination, it's very small. So by applying FTIR on this black spot, we get calcium carbonate. After that, we have to take a microscopic photo of the contamination using this high-tech light microscope. This figure here shows different components of the impurity. 
with a scale of 50 micrometers. Next, we have to perform image processing. And this figure here shows the result of the image processing. MATLAB was used for, for this purpose, also using Kani edge detection algorithm in order to determine the size of each of the components. Also, its scale should be maintained because this figure here will be moved later on to its exact location in the table prior to performing the simulation. Now, for the communication algorithm, so the objective here is to integrate MATLAB, MATLAB image processing tool with GMesh and GetDB simulation tool. The problem is in the differences between MATLAB and GMesh in reading the image. This is how MATLAB reads the image. It is column by column, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is how GMesh wants the points. Uh, this, this is how GMesh reads the points. So it needs the points to be given in the way they are connected. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, till seven. And this algorithm solves the problem. So after running the algorithm, MATLAB will generate a text file. This text file will be open in GMesh and GetDP. And here's how it will look. Now, comparing it with MATLAB, we see that it's identical. So this validates our work. After communication algorithm, we go to calculating these stresses using the FTM. It's stayed as the healthy case. We're going to solve the test equation rating square of D equal to zero. But here, we will introduce the permittivity because we have two different materials. We have XLPE and you have calcium carbonate. We took permittivity of XLP 2.5 and permittivity of calcium carbonate equal to eight. And also the distance between the inner semicon here up to the point of impurity is 11 millimeters. Now this figure here shows the results. Stress ranges from 1.12 kilovolt per millimeter up to 6.76 kilovolt per millimeter. And to better see this tiny impurity here, we're going to zoom it. So this is the zoomed view where this, these components of the impurities are shown. Now for analyzing the results, first of all, highest stresses at sharp edges. If we look here at these sharp edges, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, we see that they have much, much higher stress than the horizontal stress, like this point here. Also, vertical regions have higher stresses than horizontal regions. If we look at these three regions here, one, two, and three, they have higher stresses than this horizontal region. Also, this is the area of the highest stress, very sharp, and this is the area of the, of the lowest stress, which is very flat. Also, to better understand it, we have to put it in, in MATLAB and 3D. And this is how it will look. The conductive sheet stress is 4,124 volt per millimeter here. And the outer semicon stress is 2,597 volt per, per millimeter. We go to the impurity, we have a maximum stress of 6,761 volt per millimeter, which is even higher than the stresses at the inner semicon. And also at the impurity, we have a minimum here. So the, the minimum stress at the impurity is 1,118 volt per millimeter, which is even lower than the stress on the outer semicon. Now to better compare the result, we have to compare the stress in the healthy case, 11 millimeter away from the inner semicon, so which is at the same location of the impurity in the contaminated case, to have apple to apple comparison. Here, we're going to use the mathematical approach at 11 millimeter with the same formula and setting x equal to r plus 11, we get a stress of 3,379 volt per millimeter. Now comparing it to the maximum stress at the impurity in the contaminated case, which is 6,761 volt per millimeter, it is almost half. This table here summarizes the results. Here we have healthy XLP, healthy case, and here we have the contaminated case. Conductive sheet stresses, it's the same in both cases, contaminated and healthy. Also, insulation sheet stresses, the same. We have a maximum stress of 6,761, and stress at the same location of impurity in the healthy case of 3,379, and also we have a minimum stress in the contaminated case of 1,118. We noticed here that this maximum stress is even higher than the conductive sheet stress in both cases, and this minimum stress here is even lower than the stress at the, inner, at the outer semicon in both cases. Now for the conclusion, 
localized stresses will accurately identify. So now we can proceed to further analyze their effect on installation performance, like water discharge, water cleaning, and so on. Next, closeness within the impurity component is another factor. So the closer they are, the higher the stresses. And third and finally, uh, maximum and minimum stresses are located in the impurity vicinity and not on the inner semicon and outer semicon. Thank you for listening. Okay, are there any <coughs> questions to be directed at Omar? <coughs> yes. Oh, John Miller, Alto University, Finland. Thanks very much, it was very nice work. But I gather your PEM simulation was, and your analytical simulation was purely two dimensional, which was fine when there's no impurity, but presumably the impurity exists with some depth. Um, but we took here we took here electrostatics where you have only 2D uh, simulation with the FEM. So for the for the 3D it's next it's the next step. But uh, we will see if the like the results will be different or not. But I think 2D is uh, like 99% good because the stress is radial. It's always radial. Oh, it doesn't go. You have you have only the deflection the deflection point between the different materials. It it can go backward or forward. This is the only difference it will. Would happen. Okay, right at the back there, you can identify yourself if anybody doesn't know. Yeah, yeah, first thing is DMDGL. We worked a bit together, Omar. It was a pleasure uh, indeed, and uh, this presentation is very clear. Thank you. Uh, I have a question about close to the impurities. If impurities are well connected to the XLPE, I'm not so afraid for 6 kilovolts per millimeter. I'm more afraid if there is a small gap. So maybe it is also of interest for future work to look to the to the way uh, impurities shrink compared to XLPE or expand, because that might create a point, and that is above of the interesting work concerning the electric field of extra information whether something will become critical or not. Isn't that something? Uh, maybe in the in the future work, because yeah, as as you're saying as you're saying that with the uh, with shrinkage or uh, Expansion, you will have like voids, and voids have different permittivity, yeah. have very low permittivity, so it will have very high stress inside of it. Exactly. If we look